This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Starship's Florida launch tower is starting to take shape at the Kennedy Space Center. But when will the tower begin to rise at 39A? That's one of the questions we'll tackle on this week's Florida Starship Update. Hey everyone, I'm Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, here with this week's Florida Update on what's happening in and around the Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. At SpaceX's Roberts Road facility, work is continuing on the expansion of the site, including where the new Starship construction yard will likely be located. One of the first things that's very clear from this week's flyover, and that indicates forward progress from last week, is the placement of the rusted feet upon which Starship's launch and catch tower segments will be built. These rusted feet, which were first seen in use at Boca Chica for the Starbase facility's tower, are not just used in construction and leveling of the individual tower segments, but also in transporting each tower segment to the ultimate location of the launch pad. The fact that these rusted feet have been moved to the square foundations discussed in last week's video indicates good progress on tower pre-assembly efforts. Next to the frames that will be used for the tower construction are steel beams, which are very similar to the crossbars used for the Starbase tower. The first pillar for the launch tower is also visible. These steel sections will be assembled on top of the rusted frames to construct the large tower sections we saw getting rolled out in Boca Chica. In Boca, the tower was made out of nine segments, which were assembled step by step over the last year. Based on the parts already at the site, it seems that Florida's tower will be similar in design to Boca Chica's. In Boca Chica, it took only three months from the first section of the tower arriving at the launch site to the last one getting stacked on top of the tower. Another visible change is the addition of ground pipes to the area of the tower construction. They end in three small squares at the edge of the tower assembly area. Similar structures were seen at Boca Chica's propellant production site. They likely provide electrical and data connections around the site. A further significant visual change from last week is the addition of a large white tank at the Roberts Road facility. While the exact purpose of this tank is unknown, it is most likely a water tank for the construction site at large. This is underlined by the fact that it doesn't seem double-walled or insulated at all. The tank is sitting on top of the gravel pad that was discussed in last week's video, next to the tower construction area. In contrast to previous water towers operated by SpaceX, we're not expecting a flight to 150 meters at this point in time. Yes! Water towers can fly! Next to the tower construction area, Hangar X's new expansion grows. The roof beams on the side expansion are now completely in place, compared to last week, with parts of the roof already getting installed. The main hangar expansion is also getting more work, with one side still being open. It's not clear exactly what this area will be used for yet, but it might just be additional office space and processing space. Furthermore, the parking lot near the front of the building is almost complete to make new space for the increased workforce that will work at the expanded facility. On the west side of Roberts Road, more work is being done at what is suspected to be the Starship factory. The previously seen pile driller with an auger attached is being used to drill holes, likely for piles for the future factory. Going back to the Starship tower construction, when the segments are ready for stacking and integration, their permanent home will be none other than historic launch complex 39A. This was the main launch site of the Saturn V moon rocket and of the space shuttle. It is also the current home to SpaceX's heavy lift missions on the Falcon Heavy, and the US's human orbital launches on SpaceX's Falcon 9. At the pad, Earth work continues in preparation for tower segment stacking, as well as other additions that will be needed for an orbital launch mount. Other items critical to the new launch site inside Pad 39A include cross-country propellant oxidizer and purge lines, electrical and data runs, and connections to needed Kennedy Space Center systems for safety and quality assurance. The work is beginning to visually note the changing nature of 39A and its pending use as a dual rocket launch pad, given the dissimilarities between the Falcon and Starship systems, not the least being their size and the propellants they will use. One thing to watch for in the coming weeks is exactly what SpaceX will choose to do in terms of a flame deflector. While Elon has stated many times that no such element is devised for Starship operations, it will be interesting to see if SpaceX opts for a diverter in this case, given the proximity to 39A's existing structures and launch mount. 
These structures are critical for crewed Falcon 9 missions and for the Falcon Heavy's upcoming Space Force missions. A flame diverter at 39A would help direct away exhaust from the pad and out toward the more natural areas that surround the U.S.'s historic trampoline to the stars. And of course, most eyes will have noticed another change from last week. Say hello to Falcon 9 B-1060, which was getting ready for the Starlink 4-9 mission. This Starlink launch will be the booster's 11th flight. Over at Port Canaveral, B-1058 is still vertical after its 11th flight to space in the Starlink 4-8 mission. As you can see, the legs are already folded up to prepare it for transport back to the hangar for refurbishment ahead of its 12th flight. In the background, you can also see a fairing. It is unclear if that is from the same mission. On the drone ship A Shortfall of Gravitas, Octagrabber is being worked on. In case you've never seen it so far, Octagrabber is a heavy structure that is used to secure and hold down the booster on the drone ship after it touches down so that the booster does not tip or fall into the ocean. At Blue Origin's facility, the two-cap building is growing, compared to our flyover last week, in which we reported that the first level seemed to be completed. The first segment of the second level was recently added. The two-cat will be used for cleaning and testing of the second stage of New Glen. In front of the building, there are more parts for future construction, which indicates fast progress over the coming weeks on this structure. Next to the two-cat, a new form for a foundation has popped up. It was already visible in our last flyover, but we thought we should point it out now. It is not clear how this will be used and what this building will be. However, this is another indication of all the infrastructure work Blue Origin is doing right now to prepare the Cape and their facility for the assembly and operation of New Glen. Their main campus has shown no significant changes compared to last week. Over at Launch Complex 36, no change was visible compared to last week. This complex will host the massive New Glen rocket built by Blue. This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a website that allows you to learn interactively and at your own pace. They use examples, diagrams, and simple questions to help guide you through topics. And if you get a question wrong or just want more information, there's always a detailed explanation on how to find the answer. I've been working on their scientific thinking course, which gives a neat general overview of scientific principles. There are even hands-on diagrams of the concepts which have helped me understand the topics much faster. You can check out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash NASA Spaceflight. The first 200 viewers to use this link will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And that's all for this week's flyover. Stay tuned for more updates from Florida and make sure to also catch our daily updates from Starbase so you're up to date on the progress there as well. Thanks for watching and have a great week.